Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In this video, I just wanted to introduce to you guys a plugin that I've been working on for Unity called Simple Dialogue Editor. Now this is basically a simple dialogue system. It's very straightforward, it's linear. There's there's actually, it's really, like I said, it's really straightforward. There's not much to this, but it's uh, quite a complicated and flexible backend. So if you have a look at my dialogue test uh, object here, I'm gonna pretend that this is my like, my game's NPC. Uh, for instance. Now I've got a bunch of dialogue which I've written in here. It's as simple as clicking this plus button and you get a new entry where you can put in any sort of information you like. They're reorderable so you can just click and drag and move those around and that's uh, simple to, to change the order of your dialogue and to delete them you just click on the minus button with the event you want to remove selected. We also have message speed which you can adjust on the fly even if you wanted to. And we also have the minimum wait time. This is if you say, for instance, the message isn't completed and you say you want to go to the next message before the message is completed, you can add a delay before that happens so that the user is able to read the first message before it transitions to the next message. Now, this is the dialogue script. So this comes with the, with the, um, with the package. Uh, all you need to do is drag that onto any object in Unity and you can start applying dialogue to it. Now the actual, the way that you interface with this is simply by, let's say for instance, this is your NPC. I've got a, a script here called dialogue test. And this dialogue test script is a, for instance, we could call this a NPC controller. This would be doing the logic to say, is the player close enough to this NPC to initiate dialogue? Um, has the player collided with this sign? Things like that, you know, depending on what, what, what it is. Um, now, the dialogue system itself emits four events. These are on start, on end, on event, and on dialogue changed, which you can respond to appropriately. I'm um, using on start and on end to basically disable and enable the button, which I use to start the dialogue, which is my dialogue.play, and the button, which I use to progress the dialogue, which is my dialogue.next. Now you can bind the my dialogue.next function to say a key press very simply just by saying in your update loop if uh you know input dot get key file one equals true then um, my dialogue.next so i'll show you how it looks and how it works so when we hit play we get this start chat button this is essentially this button here because at the moment we can play when I select start, the dialogue system will fire the event on start, can play will be set to false, and we'll get the second button, which will be my dialogue.next. So I click that. And you see we get the dialogue system appear. Now you can change the sounds. They're simply a wave file under SFX, which is blip. Um, and if that speed is too slow or too fast for you, you can also adjust that using the uh, editor. So I'm gonna hit next, there we go. And you can see as it progresses on, uh, essentially the dialogue system progresses using the next function. Now if we have a look at the console real quick, you'll see a bunch of uh, console do console logs here. So if I move this, I'm just going to move this onto this side and this one to this side so we can see them both. Now essentially what you're seeing here is the events being, um, the events that I've bound to. So message changed event, that's this one down here. You can use this event to trigger code whenever a message changes. So for instance, if you wanted to, um, let's say, a certain character's name appears, you'd be able to say tie this with an avatar system so that when RM2K Dev appears, you see RM2K Dev's face on the left. When, I don't know, uh, Bob appears, you'd see Bob's face on the right. So it'd be simple as if dialogue item dot name <clears throat> equals RM2K Dev, then you would, oops, oops, that was bad. Then you would do something like display avatar for RM2K dev here. Now this happens on a per um, a per event basis. So because of this, the way the system's designed, you can have different functionality for all of these events on different NPCs simply by overriding the uh, the events that get triggered. So that's the on dialogue changed event. You could use it for something like that. You could use it for anything you like really. You could even manipulate the dialogue at runtime as it's changed. The second event that we'll look at is the on event event. <laughs> it's a funny event, but basically these events that you place into the dialogue system here, test event one, uh, test event two, when the question mark message appears, uh, will be fired off in this on event message when an event happens. So if we look at the console, the console log, you'll see that first of all, the message was changed, which is this message here. 
Then it was checked. Then the test event one was fired. So that was this one here. Now the te now the event system fires after the message is completed rendering. Then the message was changed again. The message was changed once more. Finally, the message was changed to the question marks. And then you'll see test event two was fired because test event two exists on the question marks. Now, in your event system, you'd be able to do a switch case statement. You could do a um, a call to a function which takes an event parameter and use that to trigger off different events. So for instance, you know, you could use in your dialogue system something like, oh no, the ground is shaking and then have the event say, you know, screen shake. So for instance, this one here, screen shake, just like that. And then, oops, I was in play mode. Anyway, um, and then have the screen save and then you could respond to that event by saying, you know, if event name equals screen, shake then you know shake the screen using your own code or you could even do something like trigger event and then you know event name and have a function somewhere else you know in your events system to deal with that which gives this some flexibility in the sense that you're able to trigger things to happen from within the dialogue but yeah it's still a very simple system that allows you to you know simply drag the messages around if you wish to change them you can copy paste the dialogue script just by you know copy component and then pasting the component, where is it? Paste as new, there we go. You know, so you can copy paste those those dialogue uh, scripts to different NPCs. It makes it very easy to move them around. As I said, um, you could even disable certain dialogue components and enable other components to do additional functionality. So that's in, in essence, the basics of the dialogue system. I'll create another video later showing you how we implement this and how to use it in a very simple way. And just one more thing I'll do is I'll slow that right down so you can see how the speed system works with the messages. Very annoyingly, but it does work. There we go. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. This will be up on the asset store sometime today um, and from today onwards. So when you see this video, it shouldn't be on the asset store. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get it. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Bye for now.